What up? I'm Chef Papelka. This is the Braves Time of Blog. So the MLB draft is coming up on Monday. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, so here's what we're doing, or I'm doing on this channel, is that I wanted to do a preview, which is going to be fairly short, fairly brief, just getting all of this stuff out there about how I'm feeling and what I expect to happen, uh, and then do a reaction uh, after the draft. Uh, which will be much more in-depth because, again, we'll have all the information having actually surfaced and we get to decide what we feel about what actually happened. Uh, for this, I'll just sort of go through, uh, you know, sort of my feelings on it. I'll say that I don't set any expectations on the draft anymore and I don't pick out the player that I want beforehand. Something that I've learned through years of watching the draft, particularly the MLB draft, and particularly rooting for the Braves in the draft, is that if you set your expectations or anything like that, you're going to be wrong. Uh, you, and then you're going to be disappointed, and there's really no reason to be. There's no reason to be disappointed during the draft. Uh, you're getting a great prospect in the first round, really no matter what. Uh, so don't set your expectations. Don't think you know what the Braves are going to do, because I promise you, you don't. Uh, that said, here's what my interpretation is. Is that, according to the boards and everything that I've read, there's a fairly consensus top five. Uh, which is Hunter Green, Brandon McKay... Kyle Wright, uh, Mackenzie Gore, and Austin Beck. There's a little debate on Austin Beck. I really like Austin Beck, and I've talked to you know, a bunch of people who really like Austin Beck as well. Um, so to me, Austin Beck is the fifth best prospect. Again, I'm not a scout. This is just based on the things that I'm reading. So the Braves have the fifth pick. So one of those guys, at minimum, is going to slip to you. So just take whichever one slips to you. You know, I, I like all five of those prospects. Uh, so, you know, I'm fine with just, you know, taking whichever one gets to you. Uh, but again, you know, I have my interpretation of the, of prospects. I have my interpretation of drafting strategy and the Braves have theirs. And what I've learned is that I'm not the one doing the drafting. The Braves are, uh, and they've done a pretty good job of it recently. Uh, there's also been some interpretation as well that the Braves could draft above slot value, uh, like they did last year getting Ian Anderson, uh, and then getting, uh, Muller and, uh, what the, Wentz in the second round. Uh, the Braves don't have as many picks this year, but they could do the same thing if they wanted to get a better prospect in uh, the second round. Uh, a guy that I've heard uh, name floated around for that is Adam Hazley, the Virginia outfielder. I would be fine with that. I really like Hazley. Uh, I think he can be a cornerstone outfielder. I think he's a guy that if you were drafting with the number eight pick and you got Hazley, you would be excited. So why shouldn't you be when you draft him with the fifth pick? Uh, so again, I, I would be perfectly happy with that. I really, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not picky about this draft class. I really like a lot of them. Uh, I would be fine if they wanted to draft Bukowskis or Jake Berger or Nick Prado. Um, really, you know, any of those guys I'm generally fine with. I don't like Alex Fiedo from Florida. I, I don't know what, I don't know what it is. I don't love his delivery. Um, but I don't really see the Braves going in that direction. Um, the guys that I really don't want uh, are Royce Lewis and uh, Doreen Kendall, just because I'm I'm we have so much speed in the farm system. I don't want either you know it's a high school or a college outfielder that's just really just fast and a solid hitter. We have so much of that already. Why get that when you could get like Pavin Smith or Alex Pratt or uh, Nick Prado or Austin Beck, a good power uh, hitting cornerstone. Uh, so again, that's kind of how I'm feeling. Again, like I said, I'm not going to set my expectations. I sort of have the guys that I'm like, please don't, uh, but I'll learn to live with it if they do. Uh, you know, but again, I'm not going to set any expectations. I'm not going to anticipate anything. Uh, that's my interpretation of what's going to go on. Uh, so let me know in the comments. Let me know the guy that you really, you know, have, have your eye on that you're like, this guy's better than everyone else is saying. Because reality is that the Braves are doing that exact thing where, you know, we have all our big boards. Every single team has a different big board. That's why you can't anticipate this. They said that Ian Anderson was the top guy on their board last year. And you know what? I think he was at this point. Um, yeah, so let me know what guy, you know, you're looking at. And let me know what you think is going to happen. You know, if you're like me and you've been looking at this, you know, a little more diligently than you should have. Again, I'll release a video after the draft as well with all the information and how I'm feeling about how everything went down. Uh, so I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is the Braves Time Blog YouTube channel about the Braves and baseball in general. Uh, go Braves!